Hello, bonjour. It's an absolutely beautiful day. And Duncan's at work, sadly. So I'm home alone. <laughs> and uh, Sharon, I don't usually see too much of Sharon at the weekend. She sees that as that time for Duncan and I. And she's not very, very well anyway. She's got a daughter staying at the minute and she's not very well either. So I decided to get my big girl's pants on and come for a walk on my own. As I say, absolutely beautiful day. I did check the temperature, it's warm, but hopefully not too warm for a walk. I've just realised I've come the wrong way. Let's turn around. I decided I'd tackle the bigger slope first. <laughs> because I don't want to do that at the end when I'm absolutely worn out. So I'm going to, I'm not going to rush it because then I'll just want to stop halfway and then I'm stuck, aren't I? So I'm taking my time and uh, yeah, there is a slope up each end. This is the loop you've seen us do many times. And I think, if I remember right, the one I'm going to go downhill first it's the steeper, so wish me luck. <laughs> right. For some reason, by habit, I always seem to go that way. So, the bar, the bar is open. It was shut for a couple of weeks. And you don't realise how much, even though we don't use it very much, we all seem to need it when he's closed. Anyway, at the moment, there's no one around to actually see me talking to myself. But I'm not really, am I? I'm talking to you. Oh, sounds like a wedding. So I can hear tooting going on, which usually means it's a wedding. Let's have a look. Well, if it was, I don't know where they went. Sorry, it's because I'm walking down the main road. It's a bit of traffic. So we've, uh, we are in a quiet village, believe it or not. But because we're on a quite a main road, you do get traffic on it because it is a through road. But compared to where we used to live in the UK, this is so quiet and that is really obvious to us when we go back to the UK because we notice the difference obviously you're gonna hear me get a little bit out of breath because I'm still not back in good condition <laughs> I'm gonna turn around and show you where I'm going now Well, you'd rather see the view anyway than see me. I could still talk to you. Yeah, as I say, so Duncan's working and he's going to be full on work until we go on holiday September. We've got Duncan's parents coming for just under a week at the beginning of September. So he's got a cram his work in in the time before that. So he's under a bit of pressure, bless him. We've also another reason for getting out at the moment is well it's not bad. We've got two neighbours, two new neighbours within the last year plus, and <coughs> they're both renovating. Just for me, I've got to turn around and talk to you. Yeah, they're both renovating, which is it's fantastic to see that the, some old houses are being saved and obviously right next door to us, which is you know, even better. But obviously it's noisy. The, uh, yes, bonjour. <laughs> the house immediately next door to us have been knocking down huge walls to make the place bigger. 
so I can't see them moving anytime soon. <laughs> so it's, but they did come and say at one point that they will be making a noise, which is fine, because obviously when we came here, we were making a lot of noise, because I remember Guy, the, the French man that owned it before them, I remember him, when I think about it now, he came and knocked on our door, and we did wonder if it was because of the noise, and uh, he just wanted to see what, what we were doing. So he was really interested. But, uh, yeah, so they're, they're knocking walls down. And the sad thing is, before Guy moved, he did spend quite a bit of money on the house. I think, whereas the French don't generally seem to bother to do much to, to sell the house, he did spend a bit of money getting stuff done and because now they've ripped it all out. They don't know that's what he done, but... So yeah, because the house is upside down. So I've taken you away from the view again because I want to talk to you. <laughs> um, yeah, the kitchen was downstairs in the garage and then upstairs, oh, and the shower room's downstairs. Upstairs was the living room and two bedrooms. So it's a bit of eagle to eagle day, so I think they've decided that as well. And they've knocked through the whole of downstairs now to make it one room. And whenever there's a whole open plan one room, they always call it an American um, style, which we can never quite understand because the UK do stuff like this and so do many other countries, but that's anyway, that's what they say. And, um, yeah, so then I think we're obviously going to put, I think they're putting the bathroom upstairs now rather than downstairs. So it's going to be interesting to see at the end. Hopefully we'll get invited in, <laughs> being nosy. And then next door to her on the other corner is the, I don't know if you remember, the old lady's house. It was up for sale, Leon's mum's house. And uh, his niece moved in and she's now got the whole family there converting the carve that's in basement into a bathroom so they've been busy doing that for a few weeks now but they're both busy and they're both making a lot of noise so it's not as peaceful as it normally would be so good opportunity to come for a walk and get some of that peace now that I'm away from the main road anyway We've also got guests in this weekend, which is it's a bit of a rarity these days. Um, they came in yesterday and they'll leave on Monday. Nice little family, French family. I think they must be coming up from the south because they're stopping at ours en route to the north coast. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's nice. It's a little bit of extra cash coming in. Um, so I had to prepare that yesterday, which is always hard. It's not hard work, but especially in the summer, you can imagine you sweating buckets. But, uh, yeah, if it's, I've said a few times before, thankfully we don't rely on the sheet as an income because Duncan works as an electrician. So any guests that come in, it's a, just a little bit extra towards the holidays. Let's stop a minute, just listen to that. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, and that's it then and other than when Duncan's parents come they're going to stay in the sheet because they're immediately next door we haven't got a bedroom in our place for them now anyway and um, no idea what we're going to be doing with them when they come sadly when people do come to stay with us and we want to do stuff with them because obviously if Duncan's taken the time off work he wants to make good use of his time off and whenever anybody comes, they always say, oh, don't worry, don't want to get, have to go out. We'll just stay in. But obviously, 
we'd rather go out. And going out doesn't always have to cost a lot of money, does it? We could go for, go for a picnic, go to one of the forest beaches, which is what we did when my daughter stayed last year, doing her family. So, uh, a pretty flower. Yeah, so I was all same. So, yeah, people tend to say, well, don't worry about it. Whether that's because they really would rather just come here and do nothing, I don't know, but it's a bit awkward, so we try and get a good balance. Because we can sit around indoors any time, can't we? <laughs> but it'd be nice that they've come over, because they haven't been over for quite a few years now, and so it pleased Duncan that they could come, because his dad's 88 now, and his mum's... I think just just have gone. He's 88. She must be 70. She's 70 plus. But they're both very good travellers. They like to travel about. So it's been a shame that they've not come over. There's a lunatic man running towards me. <laughs> These people do running, and I don't know. I don't understand it. <laughs> I'm gonna turn you around. There's a car coming as well. that view eh? Looks like I've done some harvesting there. There's been lots of hay been uh, bailed up recently. I'm sure. Oh, that man <laughs> just run past me. He used to be the chef of the auberge, a restaurant. Didn't realise it was him until he was right close to me. Running uphill in this heat. Lunacy. And I even refuse to walk fast, let alone run. I'm praying the camera doesn't overheat as usual. I don't think you can see it from here, but there's a combine harvester in the field there where they've been busy the other evening. That's all we could hear in the fields around us. Luckily, it wasn't while we was in bed. We've got some bits of shade here and there. Because the weather's been so good, Duncan's been really keen lately on doing things in the garden. And uh, it used to always be me when we first came here and we first got the garden. That sounds weird, doesn't it? But the garden was bought separately. But yeah, when we first got, came here, it was me that did the gardening. I was the one that cut out our first veg patches and all that, and a few boulders. And things change over time where I was ill and, and then everything really, just life, isn't it? Covid and everything else and things just, didn't get done in the same way and uh, but lately Duncan is so passionate about it he's and I think I love it because I love it when he's passionate and got a project on the go anyway but he has really been enjoying doing the garden and he's getting to a point now where he's planning all the time for the garden and I love it because he gets so stressed with work that it's a complete switch off from work and it makes him think of something else so it's, it's really good even this morning before he went to work we bought some feed for the plants and he wasn't sure 
if it could be used on all the plants that we've got. So he's double checked and he says he thinks it's going to be okay. And uh, I said on, on, a, on the garden video that you probably saw recently that I've acquired one of those plant identifier apps. And all these things cost, can cost ridiculous money, can't they? And for something you're not using all the time, it's a bit frustrating. But we've got this one and it's oh, something like 30 euro for the year, so it's nothing really. And yeah, as I probably said in the video, I can't remember now, but we don't necessarily always know what plants we've got. And of course then you don't know how to treat them. Have you planted them in the right place? All that. Um, so we tried, we was in the garden the other evening. We've done about half the garden. We shocked ourselves <laughs> how many plants we've actually got. So I was going around taking a picture of everyone and obviously the app was telling me what was what. Something coming past on a bike. Bonjour. Yeah, so we've been doing that and Duncan, so Duncan made a plan on paper of all like blobs basically on paper where the plants were and writing down the names of them all with the Latin and the English common name. Um, the wind past the microphone again no doubt. Sorry. I can't believe that these cameras haven't been made yet with a built-in sort of muffler of some sort because it's, it's not available to buy. Yeah, so we've done half the garden, we've got to do the other half. And uh, the plan is to get some spikes with slate or wood labels on, put them all around the garden so that if we need to, because we won't remember, we can see the name of the plants we've got. So we've got to do the other half pretty soon. So we've been trying to acquire some little slate labels which we're having problems with. Temu had some, reluctantly Temu. Uh, so we're not sure whether we're getting from them or whether we're trying another method. I did think about the ice cream tubs, cutting squares out of those, punching a hole in and writing on those because then they'll be weatherproof but I don't know if any writing on it would stay on it with the weather. Anyway, let's just quickly show you. So I'm walking alongside a cornfield. It never ceases to amaze me how tall they grow. <laughs> There's a hay field. Not still yet to be harvested. Following you, Mr. Butterfly. <laughs> right, we're going to go left now. This is La Grande Benetuse and La Fouillardière. So you have little hamlets and farms, obviously like the same as anywhere, and they have names. But I've quite often looked, looked up names, tried to translate them and everything. Very often they're not translatable. So I don't quite know why that is. Yet you get others where it would be La Beau Soleil, which is an obvious one, a beautiful sun or a belle view, beautiful sight, or oh, sorry, but beautiful view. <laughs> yeah, so it's like our, the name of our town, town we think Montreux is to do with monks and I can't remember what it's called now, 
basically Abbey or something like that. But yeah, <coughs> yeah it's a shame really because uh, I think it'd be interesting to you know the backgrounds of some of the names of the towns. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's the pollen getting to my throat. Well, I'm this far out now, guys. I've got to keep going. <laughs> I can't go back now. Well, I could, but it'd be stupid, wouldn't it? Just keep going, Jan. There's some poppies on the side of the road. I haven't seen too many this year. You see the poppies? This is Le Petit Benetous. We know a little old lady that lives down there. Her husband died a year or two ago. English. You can see there's some hay that's been baled and covered. Yet the, the actual field itself has gone green again already. Yeah, I can never quite understand. Does anybody know if it's a pref preference to the actual farmer or what? But some some bales are covered in plastic. Some are just left open. I can see the logic in both, but uh, but we've got more fields with them not covered this year than covered. building on the right here can't make out if it's actually if there's anybody actually living in this plot anymore you see there's loads of hail bales and machinery there but look at the building there's no roof on that building even the houses down there don't look don't look don't look lived in that's Le Grand Benetouz, which was the same as the first time you saw. <coughs> so you've been on this walk with me before. So I thought, I'll have a chat with you. It might be less boring. But then if you just like to see someone having a stroll through the countryside, That's me. Another cornfield. This house has got a lake, or pond as they might call it. There you can see that's the pond. I think that's Etang. See, in the side roads like this, is the one of the few. There are a few roads that still have overhead electrical wires and everything else. In town, they've been putting them all underground. That's a nice one, that's the one with white fluffy flowers. I read an email recently, I don't know if that's it or not, but it's obviously the wasps like that one, but there's a particular plant that they were warning everybody not to touch it because it was uh, toxic basically. I suspect there's lots of toxic plants around all the time. I assume someone has been hurt by one and 
so they've had to make an alert. Is that a thistle? More wasps? Or are they bees, little bees? I don't know. But yes. Yeah, more there. They look like thistles, but not very big. Another thing you... I don't think I've noticed it in the UK, but here one of the first things we noticed was some of these houses in the countryside. The hedges look like they've been manicured. So square, so boxy. This one, he's slipping up. He's got a few extra bits on the top he needs to cut back. But... Uh, yeah, they're usually so tidy. Oh, that's a pretty one, what's that? I don't know what that one is. Should have got my plant app out. I can't handle two cameras at once. These bits of shade every now and then are very nice relief. <laughs> Now this is a bit sad. They obviously couldn't be bothered to go to the dechettery or somewhere, but they just dumped this rubble here. It's very sad. And there's another thing, these a lot of houses are doing this now, the cladding. I'm assuming it's insulated behind. And that's why they do it. But it's a shame to cover the stone. Another house with a etang, a pond. Called Le Prechon, that one. Now, is this. Is that one of the roadside orchids? Because now there's little pur pur purple orchids you get on the side of the road here. I'm not sure how much of this video I'll put up. But as usual, if I do put it all up, because some people like a long stroll, just sat back there, a cup of tea or a glass of wine and watch someone else walk. You can always fast forward, obviously. Never be put off because it says it's 50 odd minutes long because you always still have that option. You've got to try and please everybody, really. Sharon and I are enjoying the visual podcasts. Is the other side of that. That there lake pond, whatever. And another cornfield. Next weekend there's a Fête de la Terre and it's basically a, a fair which is going to be, I think it's mainly for the farmers, local farmers, because it, but it looks like it's going to be huge this year. Not sure why it's going to be bigger than last year, but there's, you can tell on the main roads they're starting to construct everything. So it'll be interesting whether we can actually go or whether it's just farmers, I don't know. I can't imagine they'd stop us. They want people to be interested in it, don't they? That's one thing I keep seeing all the way along here, and if I'm right, the flower on a Japanese knotweed isn't it I think and there are a pain I keep struggling to get them out of our out of our garden amongst the plants Whew. I certainly feel warm now I might have to stop and have a drink in a minute the next bit of shade I'll pause and get my water bottle out. So I can just, it's just, it's a beautiful temperature to just be sitting around in the garden. And what am I doing? <laughs> That's another pretty flower. What's that one? 
is lovely. Again, probably classified as a weed, but... So, and it's very often not until you get older that you start to appreciate things like this. When you're younger, you just drive, go past on your bike or your car and just go to where you want to get to. All right, we're coming to this bridge now. I'll put the camera down and have a drink. That bridge is actually the main road through the town that I walked down alongside. Alright, drink time. Woo. There we go again, it's better. This is coming undone. Oh, another cornfield. burning some of them in a bonfire they don't usually like having them in the summer for obvious reasons we're coming up to a garden or a little farm that we've been past before as well you can hear the geese or turkeys I don't know which it is That road goes back to the main road. That road doesn't go anywhere near where I want to go. So we cross here. It's, this bit's called Le Maisier. The chicken's over there. Been doing lots of editing recently because the weather's been good. We've managed to make quite a lot of videos. So when it's cold and wet and it's quite depressing not being able to get out. This time of year, in the shops, all you see is stationery, school bags, everything, because everybody's buying stuff ready for the children to go back to school. And the other thing you see is like white house coat type things, just a, like a white overall. They always come out in the supermarkets. I think it's for jam making and stuff like that I don't know for sure Ooh. it's gonna be getting a little bit steep for me here so I'm gonna take my time and concentrate on breathing another cornfield and water running along the ditch here it just can't see it. Ooh. 
Ooh. Oh, that's nice. It's one of these. Oh, remember Duncan saying to me once, "Don't stop. Keep going. Just plod." It's hard sometimes because if you stop, then it's hard to get going again as well. See, I had to stop now. As I said, there's quite a few hills and you can't avoid them all. Do I look hot? <sighs> oh. Oh. I was going to listen to my book and route I thought I'm probably just going to keep losing the signal <sighs> feel my pain <sighs> leveled out a little bit Oh no, there's another slope coming. Oh. I'll turn you off for a minute while I scream. <laughs> well, that got the heart pumping. <sighs> this way you get to this bit and you think, want someone you know to come along in a car, which is never going to happen. <sighs> But, I'm glad I've done it, not finished yet. Good job I put my sun cream on. Another cornfield. <laughs> interesting to see how many steps it's usually around seven for this trip which is not a lot by some people's standards but Ooh. seven thousand that is my eyes are stinging from the sweat I don't usually like to come out on my own because it's uh, I, don't know, I always think of it as being risky but it's quiet and also some with showering we're talking and it doesn't seem so painful <laughs> but that's why I'm talking to you oh. You give me much conversation, are you? <laughs> Shame there's no benches to sit on the way. Oh, it's down the shade. Oh. I know when I get home I'm going to feel energised to be honest because I always do and the adrenaline's running and everything but right now my sofa is calling me <laughs> I should have a drink while I stood here as well someone else said they would delivered We're so lucky, lucky not to have to stack all of ours now. See, 
there's benches there, but I don't think the owners are likely sitting on there. Now I love this plant and I want one hibiscus I think it is. Camera doesn't do it justice. That's beautiful. First time I've seen people in that house. Windows open and everything. Stingy eyes. This house here on the end has been up for sale a few times and it looks like it's got its own lavoir in the garden. You see that? in my bag going off that I'm not in to do <laughs> oh. I don't know if you can see it I'll put the camera up look at that I think they've made that for cats so it says cattery or something on the label on the end whether it's for her cats, whether she takes a couple of cats in, I'm not sure. Let's see it. Whew. Another, another hill. I think this is the last one. Hope this is the last one. I've got to do my lace up now. That wasn't an excuse to stop either. <laughs> I'm tiring guys. Whew. More corn, cows, hey. This one's been harvested. If you can see it properly, but how about that for a view? Hear those bells? I'm assuming it's lunchtime. I have no idea what time it is, so I'm going by the bells. driving straight past me. How cruel is that? <laughs> Not that I know them. Nearly there. This is a bit of a slope but it's manageable. <laughs> it's all manageable just how much you want to push yourself. When you see this I may well be on holiday. Going to Crete, or Crete as the French call it. Oh. 
Ay. That's a mission. This nerve sound. Sangot set. Famille de Loche. Ah. So I wonder if that note that means they donated that cross. This housing estate you can see in front, since before we even came to live here, there's plots of land for sale. And for a long time, there was only ever one house. And now there's only three or four. It just didn't sell. We don't really know why. But the sign was a bit misleading because it said uh, something to lack. In other words, on a lake, but there is no lake here, so I don't know if that disappointed people, but it, maybe there was once upon a time. Now we're on Rue de Demoiselle. There you go, one, two, yeah, four. Oh. It shows you how long they've been up for sale. That was the sign <laughs> that was actually selling them. It's all fallen to bits. Rudis Sorbier. This little house here with the cladding was there is just a concrete block for a long time and a few years back someone bought it and turned it into a lovely little home that's our recycling centre I suppose you call it this information is all for people that haven't been watching my channel for long bush there with those hibiscus flowers in. Absolutely beautiful. And this is our sal de fete, as in our community hall. Again, anybody that's watched for a while will know that we had our wedding party in there in 2018. But it's totally different now. We had it when it was needing refurbing. <laughs> Looks lovely now. See down this one, this is the Rue du Soleil Levant, the Road of the Sunrise. Lovely name that, isn't it? Another cross. I don't think that's donated by anybody. There's no stone there, no plaque, should I say. Another house that's been clad and insulated from the outside. It's not a bad idea because it doesn't take any square footage or meterage off your property inside, does it? Oh, nearly home. We're walking on a flat now. This house, there's two garages as an extension, and this house is where the man that just ran past me where he lives where they used to as I say run the local auberge you must all recognize the church in front by now sign that I'm nearly home he's got some pears growing there's nothing on our pear trees we've got quite a lot A little road there is where Sharon lives, for those of you who don't remember. And this, a lot of you will know the name, but that is the tree 
that we were trying to grow in our garden. So it's shedding its flowers. So beautiful. Our garden just kept rejecting them, so we're not having one. So our guests are out, the car's not there, that's good, making the most of the good weather. And they've shut the bedroom window, which is good because quite often our guests, because it's in the loft, our guests do get a bit hot and bothered in the bedroom. We can't, just, we can't work out a way of putting a, an AC unit in. And so often go out and keep the room cool instead of just shutting the curtains. We've had it before now, where it's rained when they've been out and they left it open. They might necessarily know it's going to rain. That's what I'm saying, look at all the debris. They're doing all that work. The next door's got something out the front there, they're all super still busy. It's lunch time now, so they've all stopped. Ah! Oh. Always a welcome when you get home because the house is always cool. <laughs> One of the beauties of stone houses and houses that are insulated. Okay, that's it. Now to get a drink and collapse on the sofa. <laughs> Au revoir.